Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Jacob Bennett with Bulldog Analytics. And today I want you to consider the scenario where it's requested of you to build a report where the default state of that report is to default to the current date or the current period while allowing end users the ability to manipulate that filter. Now this also works fine if you wanna to default to the prior date or the prior period. Now the issue is that Power BI doesn't have a default setting to allow a slicer, for instance, to default to that current date or current period or prior date or prior period. And so we have to get creative to establish a usable workaround. Now I can't tell you how many times I've been sent a report in Power BI where maybe the report owner built this a year ago and they haven't made many changes. And so the default filter selection for year month or for date is a year old and it's expected of the end user to go in and update it on a regular basis. That's a terrible end user experience and I think that this current year month or current period, current date option uh, where we're going to be actually using calculated columns is a great experience for end users and it's a very easy simple workaround for you as the report builder. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into this tip and trick. All right, guys, so as you can see on my screen here, I've got an example dashboard. This is a dashboard, uh, or at least some iteration that I often use for my examples on this channel. Um, as you can see, I've got some year-to-date metrics across the top using card visuals, and I've also got some additional visuals at the bottom, which are reflecting totals based on the month uh, that is selected in the slicer. So as you can see up here at the top left, I've got a year month slicer. And as you can see, it's selected in November, 2023, which here I am now in April of 24. This really isn't usable information for me, or at least it's not current information for me. So what I want this to do, the behavior or the state of this report that I expect for this to default to is to show me the year month of whatever today's date is minus one. And I say that because depending on how your uh, refresh of your report is configured and how often your data that underlies the report updates, um, you know, today might be what you want to default to. Maybe you're in a direct query connection to a database source and there's constantly new uh, data that's being fed into your report throughout the day. In my instance, or at least in theory, this is a nightly refresh. So this got refreshed last night or sometime in the early morning. And so the latest available data that's represented is yesterday's. So I want to take into consideration that and uh, do a today minus one formula. You can actually see my last report refresh date up here in the top right is 4-1. If you're interested in how to build out one of those last report refresh dates, I have a video on that as well. But all that being said, I want my year month to default to March of 2024 so that I can see year to date values through March of 2024. And in these bottom three charts or graphs, I want to visualize the totals for March of 2024. Then the idea is that once tomorrow gets here and it's April 2nd, then this would be based on the April 1st timeframe because it would be to today minus one. And then the year month slicer is then gonna be defaulting to April. So there's this dynamic component built into this default slicer selection. Now, as mentioned in the intro to this video, there's no out of the box feature or setting for a Power BI slicer that allows you to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. So we have this nifty little workaround using DAX calculated columns. Now, before we get into the kind of code that makes up this calculated column, let's think about how when you select an option for the year month slicer in this instance, once you make that selection, there's no way to dynamically have it change automatically. And so the workaround is to actually return a textual output with the most recent date displaying as current period or prior period, however you want to do it. You know, my date is based off of yesterday, so it would return March of 2024, which technically doesn't align with today, but I think my report end users have a good enough understanding of how the report is built that if I were to default it to, quote, current period, they wouldn't be confused. Now, I've built reports in the past where they always want to see the trailing week data, so in that instance, I've defaulted it to prior period as the slicer selection. All right, so the way that I would create this current period default slicer selection is I would go over to my date table. If I click on this, you can see over here that there's a check mark in my order date table. So I know that that's what it's being built off of and not this other ship date table. So if I click on that, and in this instance, it's a DAX calculated table, so the code's gonna pop up, but you can ignore that for now. You're gonna see the option up here at the top above calculations to create a new column. 
So I'm going to click that. You can also right click and select new column here. That pops up a DAX formula bar for your calculated column. I'm going to call this year month slicer. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to do shift enter. All right, so logically what I'm doing here basically is if the date in my order date table aligns to the year month that returns for today minus one, then return current period, else return just what the, whatever the year month is so that it allows us to manipulate the slicer if needed. So I'm gonna write out the code and then we can talk through it quickly. All right, so to reiterate what I said before we wrote this code, um, if the year of yesterday or today minus one equals the year of any given date in the order date table based on the row context of the calculated column and the month of yesterday equals the month of any given date in the order date table based on row context. And just a reminder that month function for DAX returns a integer from one to 12 then return the current period else default to whatever the row month is for that given date based on the row context in your calculated column. All right, let's click over to the table view and see what this looks like. All right, so as you can see, it's created this new column over here, year month slicer. If I click on this and I'm gonna unselect select all and I'm gonna scroll all the way down and click current period, I'm gonna select that now you can see over here in the date column that the only dates that return for the current period are in March of 2024, which is exactly what I want it to do. So it's capturing all of those dates. You can see the first all the way through the 31st. And just to confirm, even though I don't think it's necessary, but if I were to clear this filter, come over here to the date and go to the between date filter and only select for dates between March 1st and March 31st of 2024. Click OK. Over in the year month slicer, you'll see that current period is the only option. Now, if I go back to my canvas, go up to my year month slicer, I'm going to replace that year month field with the year month slicer field. Drop it down, scroll down and select current period. And so now this is defaulting to March of 2024. Now, another quick note just around formatting and for a good end user experience, you might want this to sort in descending order, have current period on the top and then the months descending down from that. So up here, I'm gonna click on the slicer, click on the ellipsis, come down to sort axis and click sort descending. Now let's see what that does real quick. All right, so just for everyone's understanding, because we had to define whatever the current period is as quote current period, all of the results in this calculated column are going to be formatted as text. So because I sorted in descending order based on the year month slicer field itself, it's going to be based on the alphabetical order. And so that's how it's going to return. What I really want is for this field to sort by a different field. So if you look back in the date table, here we've got this year month sort field, which is basically just the first of any given month. If I were to remove all filters, you'll see that it's just the first of any given month that's associated with that line item. So I like to sort by that. So if I click on that year month slicer field that we created, come up here, I'm gonna drop down this sort by column and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna select year month sort, which is that field that aligns with the first day of any given month. Let it load for a second. Let's go ahead and click drop down. And as you can see, it's now sorting in descending order as I would like it. All right, guys, that's all I've got today for defaulting a slicer selection in your report to a current period or a prior period or really whatever your preference is. You know, in my example today, we used current uh, year month or current period. For you, it might be a specific date selection. It might be by week. 
It might even be by year. So it really comes down to end user preference or really whoever's commissioning the report and how they want it viewed. Again, I hope that you got a lot out of this video and that you're able to employ this in your reporting going forward and that ultimately it benefits the uh, experience of your end users. If you like this kind of content, I hope you can follow along. We've got a lot more coming out in the near future and I will see you in the next video. Bye.